welcome to the BME life. So about a few days ago, I got an, a message on Instagram from this biomedical engineering student and she said, hey, I am, a, I am also a biomedical engineering student. Can you please help me out? Can you please tell me all the courses you're going to study and all the practical work you do regularly? When I saw this message, I was like, whoa, like this is really cool. I think it's like the first question that someone's ever asked me. So I was really excited about it. And also because I know that when I was looking into going into the BME major, I kind of just went in blind. And I know that if I had had someone who helped me out with what I'm about to tell you, it would have been way easier so that's what i'm gonna do for you so the first thing i guess would be to define biomedical engineering bme combines engineering principles with biological chemical and physical sciences in order to define and solve problems in medicine you know like diagnosis and treatment creating devices you can even go into medical school if you wanted to but yeah, let's just start with the program admission. So before that, actually, just for a little disclosure, as you may or may not know, I'm in the undergraduate biomedical engineering program at UTSA. So some of the things that I say might not apply to whatever school you're thinking of going to, but they should be fairly similar. I know I also apply to UT Austin, and the only admission requirement that was different was that they strictly required calculus too. Other than that, everything was the same. So I want to say most schools will be around the same. So yeah, for admission, you can go into UTSA's website. I actually applied at UTSA and I came in directly into the program as a transfer student. You first need to meet all the UTSA requirements you can look those up in the website but they're not that many you also have to have taken calculus one or have had taken the prerequisites to be able to take calculus one on your first semester and you also need to be admitted into the college of engineering you also need two letters of recommendation a copy of your transcript a letter of interest you know like explaining why you're interested in biomedical engineering and what you see doing yourself with it and the only difference for transfer students is that they require you to have a 3.0 GPA or above and you also need to have taken at least 15 credit hours of engineering or science courses. I think the most important thing is to have good letters of recommendation. Personally, I asked my French teacher and my college algebra teacher to give me letters of recommendation but obviously it'd be better if you ask like your biology teacher or your calculus teacher or your engineer you know like something engineering related just so it helps you better just as long as they write good letters of recommendation you should be good so other than being required a 3.0 to enter the biomedical engineering program, you actually need to keep good academic standing as well. You have to keep a 3.0, but it's okay if like, if you're a transfer student or a freshman and during your first semester, it's like you're kind of getting used to it and it's really hard and your GPA will probably drop. The BME de department is very understanding about it. If you fall below a 3.0, but above a 2.5, they'll put you over programmatic probation for one semester. You just have to bring yourself up, you know? So don't be discouraged if in your first semester you do not so good. So now coming into the fun stuff, like all the courses you have to take, I know this is the one thing that the person who messaged me was really interested in hearing. So. Um, I think this helps a lot too if you're interested. Obviously, uh, you need the core requirements like the general core classes like arts, communications, life and sciences, history, all that stuff that every major needs. Other than that, you also need 
general engineering requirements. These are classes that all engineering majors need to take regardless of your mechanical, electrical, civil, you need to take these classes. And you can see them here, they're chemistry, EA, um, calculus one and two, and physics one and two. And you also need to take chemistry two and statistics. So after the general engineering courses, you need to take the general biomedical engineering course. These include physiology, intro to BME, biomechanics, biomaterials, cell biology, bioinstrumentation, BME labs, and the senior design classes. Now this is where it gets interesting. The BME program actually has three different concentrations. The first one is biomechanics. So biomechanics is basically the study of the movement and the anatomy of your body and how all the forces internal and external affect your body. People who go into biomechanics usually working like prosthesis, care delivery systems. They also can work with artificial organs because a lot of forces affect the way organs work like shear stress, compression, the pumping of the heart, all those forces of running the pressure of your bones, your spine, when you walk, when you stand, when you jump, um, how we move, everything is biomechanics. Second concentration offered at UTSA is imaging in nanobiotechnology. Imaging is basically how can we study our body like the inside without having to open it. Think of MRI, ultrasounds, CT scans, x-rays, all that. How do we use magnetic waves of electronics to go inside the body in the most minimally invasive way? Honestly, I've heard that this is one of the hardest concentrations just because of all the background knowledge in it, but it's also very, very interesting and very cool. Imaging is really, really important. Similarly, nanobiotechnology, how can we create products for drug delivery systems or nano devices maybe. They both go hand in hand. So the third concentration is biomaterials and cellular and tissue engineering, which is actually the concentration that I'm going to be doing. So biomaterials is basically, you know, synthetic biological materials that we use. Mainly includes like the biocompatibility. We can't just like think of putting a device or an implant in our body and expect it to work perfectly. You know, we have to study like what kind of material do we need? Like what kind of mechanism is gonna go inside our body? What's gonna be happening so that it's compatible with a device and it doesn't reject it? How can we make our biological bodies and our handmade um, devices compatible how can we make them work together cellular and tissue engineering is basically using the engineering principles into those levels you know cellular and tissue so signaling mechanical transductions nanotechnology creating microfluidic devices cell culture tissue culture some of the research in cell and tissue engineering include like working with stem cells how can we grow tissues in the lab so we can study drugs in vivo drugs are usually tested in vitro and that's very different from the actual environment that goes inside our body so it's very important cell culture and tissue culture are very important to be able to test as best as we can products that we're trying to develop going back to the courses that you need to take well you get like bme electives and those depend on your concentration so as you can see right here you need 15 credit hours to from your BME electives and nine of these have to be from your concentration and the other six have to be from a different concentration for example I'm gonna be taking nine credits from my biomaterials and cell engineering um, concentration but I also need to take six of either imaging or biomechanics and that's kind of like your minor concentration so just to close this up really quick, um, one of the things that the person who messaged me asked me was what is the workload 
of a BME student. I can honestly say that it's definitely way more than other majors. And I'm not saying this just to be like, oh yeah, like BME or like engineering majors like work harder than other majors. It just requires more time for you to input. There's a lot of material that's really hard to learn and you just really have to know it to be good at it and because you're going to be seeing it in all your classes. So there is definitely a lot of work. It's not impossible. Uh, it's not like, I promise you, you won't be like 24-7 like in the library studying till midnight because that's not how it is. That's not what I do. Um, even when I have tests, like I'm not like busy every single second but there will definitely be times especially dur during like tests and final weeks that you will be extremely busy and more than busy you will just be like really stressed it is hard but it's not impossible anyways guys this is pretty much it for this video let me know if you have any questions because i really like answering what you want to know you know i know i can do a video on whatever i want but i also would love for you guys to ask me what you guys want to know but thank you so much for asking this question i think it's gonna help a lot of people but yeah guys make sure to follow me on instagram at the bme life if you want you can also ask me questions there and stay tuned for a video that i will be uploading really really soon it's gonna be on the new apple watches ability to do an electrocardiogram which i think is really cool but we'll be talking about it like does it work does it not how trustworthy it is from a bme point thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe if you haven't and let me know if you have any